Is it recording? I can never tell. Anyway, hiya. Yeah. <sighs> you must be cooking the dinner again. I'm alright, fine. Business as usual, really, i.e. none. It just goes on and on, doesn't it? I mean, it's not like anyone's taking any notice anymore, though at least you could get into Sainsbury's in under an hour today. I was standing by the loose, deciding whether to indulge in a cheeky grazia when I could hear all this and properly piss your pants laughing. And then it goes quiet for a bit. And then three girls come clattering out, definitely not from the same household, but what can you do? So I stand well back and I think, oh, fuck it, all this queuing's gone to my bladder, so I nip in, sit down, I'm in the way, you know, thinking maybe I'll drip dry so I don't have to touch anything. And then I hear all this sniffing from the next cubicle. And I think, no, it's all right. It's not likely that any particle, what are they call, um, not ozones, a aerosols, they're not going to come jumping up over the partition and get me. But then she starts really sniffing and snotting and I think she, she has got it. Trust me to have forgot my mask. So I'm not going to stick around to find out. So I'll do a quick wipe, open the door with a bit of a roll, just as she has come out of the next cubicle and I'm thinking, distancing, get the fuck out of Dodge. She's about 13, no mask. So I can see that she looks pale. I just frightened, I don't know. I, I can tell there's something wrong, but I decide I'm not going to get involved. So I just quickly wash my hands, getting ready to leg it. And I can see her in the mirror coming up behind me, putting her hands in her pockets. And I think, fuck, what's she doing? And she just says, do you know how to read one of these? She pulls her hand out of her pocket and I look down and it's a pregnancy test. I just look at it and it's so white against her skin and there it is, this massive pink cross glaring up at me and she says, do you think it's positive? And I just laugh. But she's looking at me so earnestly and I remember all the scares I've had so I say, well, pretty much, but they say to do another one in a week because it can be a false positive. And all the time, this sicky flamingo pink is screaming up at me. Right, it's storks that bring them, isn't it? Not flamingos. But anyway, you get the gist. So she's looking at me like the world has just dropped through her arse. So I say, well, have you got a GP? She's like, I'm not going there. So I'm like, all right, so what about your mum? And now she's really panicking. And I'm panicking now because she's like a foot from me and I'm squidging into the wall trying to get some distance. And I say, okay, so um, how about somebody older, a, a teacher? She just laughs. And then she starts welling up and I think, Jesus, why me? So young, so uh, casual, so easy. Ooh. And she looks me right in the eye. And you know when someone does that and they, they forget to hide a complete stranger and you're just looking straight into their soul. Not that I believe in any of that crap, but she just looks at me and she says, have you ever had children? And for a second it's like the world's been hollowed out, like... The earth slips from under me. It's not like I haven't heard the question a million times and bracing myself for the awkward pause. The head tilt of patronising pity. But she reads me and she says, Oh, well, you won't know then. And that, so I guess she's talking about a termination. So I say, right, well, you need to talk to your GP about that. How many weeks are you? Three missed periods. So she's running out of time if that's what she wants. 
But I can't help thinking, what a waste. And the mates come clattering back in and, and thinking, oh shit, aerosols and they're trying to drag her out like, what are you talking to that dried up bitch for? True, but thanks. But they can see she's in bits so they just slope out again. And she's just looking at me. Like she's reading me. Reading the chapters of the lives that never were. The sleep that wasn't lost. The hands that weren't held. The first footsteps that were never taken. And I start crying. Standing in front of this child stranger and the tears just come rolling down my face I can't stop them and I can see she wants to look away like she's almost scolded by my pain like her worst thing that ever happened to her panic can't compute my aching my rage and I can see fear the life yet unwritten in her eyes a million possible streams running from the one source The unopened book. But I can't hack anymore, so I'm, I'm off out into Sainsbury's trying to distract myself on the veg section. Absent mindedly fingering the fennel. Azuspermia. Sounds like a book about a jolly whale, doesn't it? Not a fertility cul-de-sac. It's a shame they don't sell sperm in Sainsbury's. Nice little sachets. Probably someone hasn't pitched it on Dragon's Den. Peter and Deborah would definitely fight over that. Anyway, I sort of come to. And I I'm aware that she's standing right behind me. I can feel her breath on me. I can practically smell the oestrogen. And I turn round and I say, look, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And she just puts her arms around me like if she could just transfer it to me, this burden. And I'm thinking, what the fuck are you doing? And then it hits me. And I start to sob. I know everyone's staring at me, but I can't stop myself. just can't stop myself. A river of pain flowing out of me until my body dissolves and there's nothing left but the dark aching void in the middle. Big bang of longing expanding through the beginning and the end of time. And she just holds me. This child woman. There, 
among the brassicas. And I can see people looking disapproving like that's definitely not her daughter. And all I can feel is this deep, heavy warmth soaking into me. And then all of a sudden her friends are there pulling her away like, what are you doing you weirdo, you need to get this sorted. And she's gone. And I want to call after it. You don't have to do this, you know. All these lockdown mums bleating about their kids. There are worse things, you know. Like standing in Sainsbury's among the cauliflowers and the ghosts of fantasy children. And then this woman's come up to me, eyes bulging over a mask, like, two metres, two metres. And instead of the rage, and you know me, I would have properly given it her, even though it is a better cop. I just turn and I walk away. I know everyone's staring, but I'm not thinking, I'm just walking. And I walk out onto Warwick Way. And I'm not aware of anything but the sunlight making shapes with my tears and blurring the passing shapes. And I'm on my doorstep before I realise I've walked out with it. No, I have been aware of this. Well, I'm carrying something all this time, something warm, full, And I look down at the battered plastic shopping basket. Then it's empty.